There was something peculiar about the wolf. It walked with a slight limp, favoring its left hind leg. Tao Shan, concerned, approached with caution. Upon closer examination, she identified a severe cut, likely inflicted by a hunter's trap. Unable to leave the suffering animal, Tao utilized the basic first aid knowledge she had gained from her years at the park to clean and dress the injury. The wolf, seemingly grateful, appeared to recognize her kindness and gradually began to trust her. From then on, the wolf, whom Tao affectionately named Shadow, regularly joined her during her patrols in the national park. Despite the oddity of their companionship, they both valued the tranquil company and peaceful walks through the woods. As the seasons turned, Tao's tenure at the National Park Service was drawing to a close with the onset of winter. On a chilly morning, as she walked with Shadow by her side, a tragedy occurred, engrossed in the scenery of frost-covered leaves. Tao failed to see an icy spot on the trail. She slipped, and her head collided with a rock, rendering her unconscious and seriously injured. When emergency services arrived at the scene, they were amazed to see Shadow lying protectively beside Tao. Unwilling to leave her even as the paramedics attempted to help, Shadow's extraordinary behavior baffled everyone until an astute doctor noticed the wolf's intense gaze on Tao's still body. Concerned that there might be additional unseen threats, the doctor alerted the local police in Xinjiang province to the possibility of foul play or other dangers. The police quickly secured the area and commenced their investigation. As they delved deeper, they became aware of the special relationship between Tao and Shadow and how it had developed over the months. This insight explained the wolf's protective behavior and his profound loyalty to Tao, who had once saved his life. Tao was urgently transported to the hospital, where she received the essential treatment for her recovery. During her stay, the local media learned of her story and the tale of Tao and Shadow captivated the hearts of people across the nation. It served as a poignant reminder of the unexpected friendships that can form between humans and wildlife and the deep bonds that develop through acts of kindness toward animals in distress. She swiftly took off her backpack and pulled out the emergency medical kit she was obligated to carry. With precision and attention, she began to treat the wolf's injury, thoroughly cleaning, disinfecting, and wrapping it. Despite her detailed efforts, the wolf remained unusually serene as if it had complete trust in her. Once the bandage was secure, Tao prepared to release the wolf back into the wilderness. However, the animal seemed hesitant to leave her side, choosing instead to stay near her. It appeared to Tao that the wolf's lingering was a sign of its gratitude. Together, they ventured deeper into the forest, following Tao's regular patrol path, unaware of the unforeseen events that awaited them. Approximately half a mile later, Near the forest's edge, Tao realized they had looped back to the road where her car was parked. It was time to part ways with the wolf. Just as they were about to say farewell, a loud honking noise from down the road grabbed Tao's attention. Despite being off duty, her sense of responsibility urged her to check it out. Upon arriving at the scene, Tao encountered three men. One was urgently honking his car's horn, while the others looked worriedly down a hill into a ditch. Initially startled by the wolf accompanying Tao, she quickly assured them that the animal was harmless. They explained that they had stopped to aid a driver whose car was stuck in the mud, and were now waiting for a vehicle that could tow it out. Realizing she could help, Tao offered her a larger vehicle for the job. Together, they attached ropes and successfully pulled the car from the mud, a task that left everyone relieved and grateful. The men profusely thanked Tao for her unexpected yet invaluable assistance. As they bid farewell, Tao returned to her car and hit the road, filled with a sense of achievement from the day's unexpected turn of events. Tragically, moments later, her day took a devastating turn when a truck collided with the driver's side of her car. In a shocking twist, a severe accident unfolded as both a car and a truck collided and veered off the road, crashing into nearby trees. The three men who had just been helped by a woman named Tao were horrified by the scene. The impact left both vehicles severely damaged, with no signs of survival visible. The men, located in a secluded rural setting, 
acted quickly to remove Tao and the truck driver from the wreckage and urgently transported them to the nearest village called Taos. Tao was a simple village with scarce resources. And unfortunately, their only doctor was away when the crash happened. As news of the accident quickly spread through Tao's, Tao's family hurried to be by her side, hoping to resuscitate her. Despite their attempts, Tao showed no signs of life. After many hours, the villagers began to grieve, convinced they had lost her. The following morning, as they started the preparations for her traditional burial and Tao lay in her coffin, an unexpected event took place. A wolf, which Tao had once rescued, emerged at the village's periphery. The village children were startled and screamed, while some of the adults recoiled in fear. Driven by a deep bond, the wolf had followed Tao's scent all the way to the village. The wolf urgently pawed at Tao's coffin, indicating a frantic effort to reach her. The three men who had been helped by Tao told the villagers of her previous act of saving the wolf, suggesting that perhaps the wolf was trying to reciprocate. Just as the villagers were about to disregard the wolf's actions as futile, the town's doctor returned. His daughter had been a friend of Tao's, and he had hurried back upon hearing of the accident. Noticing the wolf's extraordinary behavior, the doctor opted to further investigate Tao's condition. To the shock of everyone present, he found that Tao was still alive. Her heartbeat was weak and barely noticeable due to a severe back injury that had compressed her lungs rendering her breathing almost undetectable. Convinced that Tao was still clinging to life, the doctor immediately summoned an ambulance. Given the critical nature of the situation, he decided to drive her to the city hospital himself. The drive to the hospital was fraught with tension, accompanied by nearly the entire village in a convoy. Upon arrival, the doctor swiftly ushered Tao into the emergency room and briefed his colleagues on her critical state. The revelation that Tao was still alive reignited hope among her family and the villagers who had believed they had lost her. After several further examinations and the administration of vital life support, it was confirmed that Tao was alive. Though in a coma, her path to recovery began. The ordeal stretched over many months, yet she miraculously survived. Upon her return to her village, she was greeted by an astonishing surprise. It appeared that the wolf had been visiting nearly every day, anxiously awaiting her recuperation. Tao owed her life to this loyal wolf, who seemed intent on repaying her for her previous acts of kindness. This tale poses a fascinating question. What were the wolf's intentions when it was observed scratching at Tao's coffin and whimpering? This behavior demonstrates a remarkable display of loyalty from a wild animal to a human. What are your thoughts on this? Do you have any similar stories of animal loyalty? Please share your views and stories in the comments below. Next, there's another story. Let's continue to see it. Animals are often known for their patience, especially when interacting with children, making them perfect companions for young ones who are beginning to discover their environment. While most domestic pets demonstrate a calm demeanor, even the best trained dogs can exhibit imperfections. This reality was highlighted by a startling event involving an infant girl and her family's pet, which was anything but typical. Boa, a young girl from rural China, experienced an unusual childhood. Her parents, Fang and Wenzhou, raised her on a farm located on the outskirts of Pingyao, a town situated over 400 miles from Beijing. Like many rural Chinese children, she was surrounded by a variety of farm animals, however. Boa's early years were unique because she never pestered her parents for a puppy. In fact, she didn't have a dog at all. Instead, her family had taken in a very different kind of animal. A few years earlier, her parents had come across an injured wolf in the forest near their home. Moved by compassion and unable to ignore the suffering creature, they took it home and nursed it back to health. The wolf integrated into their family and soon, they discovered it was pregnant. After the wolf gave birth to two cubs, it and its young formed a small pack that Boa's parents looked after. Boa was only a year old when the wolf first arrived. For safety reasons, her parents initially kept the wolf and its cubs outdoors. As the cubs matured, they would occasionally venture inside the house. Although Boa was always safe under her parents' vigilant supervision, her natural curiosity and determination drew her to the wolves. 
she would spend hours observing them from a window. Although she was never permitted to interact with them due to the inherent risks, the wolves resided in a large enclosure at the back of the property where Boa's parents would feed them substantial portions of meat. Despite the dangers, the wolves' presence captivated young Boa. Once she learned to walk, there was no curbing her curiosity. She grew increasingly daring, exploring every part of the house and consistently feeling the pull towards the wolves, her parents. Fully aware of the dangers, remained vigilant, but they were soon to discover just how fearless their daughter could be. Boa's intrigue with the wolves continued to grow, leading to unforeseen circumstances. Despite careful precautions, an unforeseen interaction was nearly unavoidable. This led to a startling event that reminded everyone of the unpredictable nature of their exotic pets and the constant need for attentiveness. The fierce teeth of the animals were a perpetual warning of their status as top predators. In the absence of food, there was nothing they wouldn't hunt and kill, including their own young cubs who, despite their cute appearance, were natural-born killers with lethal capabilities. In the middle of all this, young Boa grew more and more curious, necessitating vigilant supervision by her parents, yet, life's distractions sometimes took their eyes off her. One such distraction occurred dramatically one day while Boa's mother was in the living room. Suddenly, she smelled the sharp odor of smoke. A wave of panic hit her as she remembered the stove had been left on. She looked towards the kitchen and to her horror, saw flames leaping into the air, dropping everything. She rushed to the kitchen, turned off the gas, and quickly filled a bucket with water. With a forceful throw, she quenched the flames, extinguishing the fire with a loud sizzle. Once the smoke dissipated and her nerves calmed, she turned to reassure Boa that all was fine. A quick survey of the living room revealed that Boa was nowhere to be seen. A wave of panic swept over her again. She started a frenzied search throughout the house, flinging open each door she came across until she reached the ajar back door. Much to her horror, it was completely open and led directly to the wolf enclosure. With her heart pounding, she dashed outside praying she wasn't too late. At first, there was no trace of Boa or the wolves, but then, in the distance of the enclosure, she caught sight of Boa's pink outfit. She accelerated her pace, berating herself for her carelessness. How had she lost sight of her daughter? Why had she allowed such dangerous creatures to live so near to her child? When she finally got to Boa, her heart dropped at the sight of her daughter on the ground. However, as she knelt down, Boa looked up with the broadest grin, puzzled. Her gaze then shifted to Boa's lap, where two wolf cubs were snuggled up, basking in affection from their human big sister. A sense of relief mingled with wonder enveloped her as she inhaled deeply and regained her composure. He had never anticipated such a gentle interaction between his daughter and the wild wolf. As he watched them play, he realized that perhaps the wolf viewed Boa not as a threat but as a part of her pack. His wife returned from shopping to find them like this. In her initial shock quickly turned to awe. She had always been cautious about the wolves, especially with her daughter around, but seeing the bond Boa had formed with the alpha female wolf alleviated some of her fears. She watched as Boa giggled, pulling gently at the wolf's thick fur. The mother wolf, in turn, nuzzled Boa with a kind of affection and patience she had never shown to any human before. It was clear that a unique friendship had blossomed between them. One that defied the usual boundaries between wild animals and humans, this extraordinary connection was something the whole family would cherish and remember, a testament to the unexpected ways in which love and trust can bridge the gap between the wildest of creatures and ourselves. I was amazed by the wolf's patience. Boa swayed her head back and forth, once more placing her hand in the wolf's mouth. She even planted a big kiss on the wolf's lips. The wolf responded with incredible gentleness, patience, and affection. The mother wolf showed no protectiveness over her cubs. She fully trusted Boa, likely viewing her as one of her own. From that day onward, Boa made daily visits to the wolves. As the cubs grew, they frolicked and played with her, even when they played among themselves, biting and scratching. They never left any marks on the little girl. Boa even took charge of feeding them, often considering it her favorite pastime. 
she delighted in watching the wolves enjoy a large piece of meat. When she was old enough to go to school, no one could believe she had been raised among wolves. Her teachers were particularly doubtful, but their skepticism was silenced when she showed videos as evidence of her extraordinary childhood. From then on, no one at school dared to question her. Boa was known as the Wolf Girl, a title that defined an extraordinary chapter in her life. Would you ever allow your child to interact with wolves, even if they were domesticated? Have you ever had a moment when you lost sight of your child, even briefly? What were they doing when you found them? We invite you to share your experiences in the comments section below. Thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you next time.